What's up guys? It's Captain Van over here, and today I have a really exciting video for you. It's not about these sunglasses or about that crappy appearance for you guys. It's about something that you've been looking forward to. This, guys, is the X Hover Van Over Frame. I'm really proud to release this to you guys, and I just wanted to make a short video for any of you who are interested in this frame and just talk about some of the features behind the frame, behind the design, and uh, we'll kind of wrap up some thoughts and maybe bob a little bit, and let's just jump straight into it. So. This is the XMR Vanover frame. The first thing that a lot of people are going to mention is that it looks very similar to previous XMR frames, and they are absolutely right. I have some examples. This is what I flew last year. This is the X Hover Win 5, or what's left of a X Hover Win 5, anyways. Um, this is a really strong racing frame. I had a good time with this. I actually won the 2017 national race with this frame. This is kind of what started this whole trend of creating my own frame. And this is where I started to get the basis off of. We went to the Win 5L after that, and now, of course, to my frame. So some key differences with my frame. We'll just kind of start off, but I want to start off by showing you one of the prototypes from March of this year. This is the prototype. Lots of frames, okay? And obviously, it's seen some better days, but the whole reason behind developing these frames was to make sure that it was something that was a rock-solid racing option that you guys would have good success with. So the first thing I did is I wanted to strengthen up the way that the arms mounted to the frame, and I also wanted to isolate the standoffs from structurability on the arms. So if you look at the standoff screws, they are not structural to the arms of this frame, which means when you're swapping out an arm, it just makes it a lot easier. You don't have to mess with the standoff. It just seems to quicken things up a little bit. It's also only two screws, as you can see here, to remove an arm, one right here and one right here. Obviously, these have seen some better days, but regardless, when you're removing the arm, you don't have to touch your stack screw. You might have to loosen the whole bottom just a little bit to make it a little bit easier, but besides that, the arm slides right off. You put a new arm in. I've actually been at a race where I did break one pre-production arm, and I was able to swap it in between heats and get back in the air, which I know a lot of frames out there do, but it's just a nice added feature of this frame, and for me personally, it's a must-have in racing frames. So along with doing that, I've made the whole bottom stronger, so you're less likely to snap a mid-plate right here. You're more likely to break the arm, which in my opinion is much more important than breaking this mid plate because if you break this mid plate you're gonna have a bad day whereas with an arm you can just swap it and they're pretty strong arms they're actually five millimeter chamfered edge arms as you can see here I went with chamfered edge as I think it's a little bit stronger it lasts better over time and it just looks awesome as well on this frame so it's a super strong frame but if you need to replace it two screws done I also went with just three motor screws on the uh, arm for the motor. I find that you only need two to three. And this is a 16 by 16 pattern, which supports the newer style motors. And uh, almost all the popular motors will fit on it out there. It's got good protection on the end of the arm. So if you hit something at high speed, it's gonna hit the arm rather than hit the bell of the motor. And from my experience with this frame, I've been killing a lot less bells since doing this design of the arm. And if I do kill a bell, it's like full send straight into concrete or something. Along with that, we went with the soft mounts for a 20 by 20 size stack, so it does not take a 30 by 30, it's simply a 20 by 20. And I went with a 20 by 20 frame because I believe a lot of more people need to try 20 by 20 first and try it on a solid frame option like this because 20 by 20 is much lighter, does everything that a 30 by 30 stack can do for a much smaller, much lighter size. And for me, it's really just the only option to go with at this point. I also left, compared to other frames, plenty of space inside. So if you're running the 20 by 20 stack like so, you got plenty of room to put your receiver and a capacitor back there or put it up here. The camera doesn't touch the stack as well. You can actually crank it up to 90 degrees of camera tilt or all the way down to zero. Whatever you like, that's what you can do. I keep it around 60 degrees myself. But if you need to fit the bigger, let's say, Flight 1 Spark 32 ESC, as you can see here in this build right here, here's a Spark 32 with plenty of room, still soft mounted. You can mount it either way, no problem in this frame, and your camera is still protected. So that's some of just the important features about the frame. Besides that, it has my nice little Van Over logo too, which is important. And uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Bob a little bit because he is my pick guy and he's been working on quads for me for over a year now and having to fix all the stuff that I break at these big races. So I kinda wanna hear his thoughts on this, working on it, and uh, let's just hand it right over to him. So this is Bob Mazza. Hey guys. Uh, the, the, the new frame and even the old, basically the prototype, um, has gone through a lot of testing. We've we've tried just about everything to destroy it. Um, obviously, uh, some rough flights. When it does break, we've managed to be able to get it back up and running very quickly. Um, that was part of the part of the equation that we were looking at in the new frame. You know, over, overall, with a wire protection um, design with a wire set wrap around, everything seems to have come together pretty good. Um, obviously, really impressed with the 
the ease of build. It was um, about an hour yeah. from start to finish to, to build the, the last fleet of them that we built and everything's holding together really great. Now one more thing I want to mention about this frame because a lot of people are going to ask me if it's a stretch X frame or a Shrex and to be honest with you guys I kind of went back and forth with this a lot and me personally I prefer a stretch X but with modern day firmwares it doesn't make much of a difference. So I kind of compromise a little bit. If you notice, compared to some other frames, it is a stretch X frame, but it's not a massive stretch X. I could have stretched this thing a lot more. And what I find as well as a lot of other top pilots find is that the wider profile frames seem to actually fly a little bit better and just track a little bit better in the air. The prototype frame is about a half an inch shorter than the newer production frame. And I played around a lot with this, guys. I did so much R&D testing to figure out what would be the best combination for you guys as racers. And I really hope you check it out. So it's available now on xsever.com. Link in the description down below, as well as all the components that I use for my racing builds. We've built so many of these things that we put 6S on them, 4S, 5S, you name it. We've tried it on this thing, and they all seem to work really well. So go check it out, guys. The Xever Vanover now available. It's a $60 frame. It's going to be one of the best racing frames you've ever purchased. I guarantee it myself. And I look forward to meeting you guys and hearing your thoughts on this frame. And I also look forward to racing it through 2018 and into 2019. So thank you guys so much for watching, and it's time to cut to some flight footage now. Feel it coming back. Watch it